Good evening, everybody. We are reconvening from closed session. It is uh, welcome to the regular meeting of the Bellflower City Council. Today is Monday, February 10, 2020. It is 7 p.m. and I'm calling this meeting in order. Roll call, please. Councilmember Santanez. Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Here. Councilmember Dutton. Here. Councilmember Hamada. Here. Mayor Garza. Here. I'll entertain a motion to excuse Councilmember Sandinez. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Without objection, that'll be the order. Next up, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have the invocation conducted by Mayor Pro Tem Dan Coops, and we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance uh, being led by our Assistant City Manager, Mr. Lingarecki. Please stand. Please bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening hour to give you thanks for all the blessings that you've given to our city and for those in attendance and throughout our city. Be with us as we deliberate those items before us. Give us the knowledge and the reasoning to do the right thing for our town. Please be uh, mindful of that we're always concerned for the first responders in our city, the fire and our sheriff's departments. Hold them in your hand and protect them from all ill and anything that would ever go wrong in their world. We also want to be mindful of our nation as we are, want protection uh, being offered to all those that would uh, take care of our national interest. In his name we pray, amen. Place your hand over your heart, address the flag, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. All right, for item 9A, uh, we will have city council announcements and I'll start it off. Impress your Valentine this year with a sweet song performed by Mayfair High School vocal program for $5 anywhere in the USA. The Singing Valentine phone calls will be sung live on Friday, February 14. Please download the form at www.bellflower.org, fill in the required information, and mail back the form along with a check donation to, Bellflower, uh, to Mayfair High School. Attention, Gina Holcomb. The address is 6000 North Woodruff Avenue, Lakewood, California, 90713. Phone orders with payment must be received by February 13th. Mayor Pro Tem Dan Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The City of Bellflower invites you to participate in the Bellflower Honors Program. This program offers an opportunity to honor past and present military personnel from Bellflower by dedicating a street pole banner. For information, please contact Mike Machado at 562-804-1424 extension 2267. This is kind of a new program that we're getting into and you probably noticed them in other cities whereby you'll see a standard, a light standard that will depict a photo of a military person that has served our community. And it doesn't have to be someone that is currently enrolled in the service. It can be your father who did it in 1953 or your grandfather who did it in 1948. Uh, you can go back to anybody that ever served in your family that you would like to honor. <coughs> and we'll put it up and the whole uh, city will see it and it'll be a great opportunity to uh, show how proud we are of our military heritage. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Council Member Raymond Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, the city hall will be closed next Monday, February 17th, and, and that'll be in observance of President's Day. There'll be no changes to the regular trash collection and street sweeping schedules, so please don't forget that. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Hamada. Mr. Uh, Councilmember Ray Dutton. Thank you, Mayor. It is that time of the year again. Time to get ready for spring. The Spring Basket Program. The Bellflower Volunteer Center partners with the community and groups, schools, service clubs, churches, and organizations of, and residents to provide supplies for the students that need. These spring baskets include much of the needed items like school supplies, toys, balls, puzzles, toiletries, socks, and more. If you want to get involved as a volunteer, please contact the Volunteer Center 
uh, telephone number 562-804-1424, extension 2331. The deadline to drop off any donations at the Bellflower Volunteer Center is March 19th. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Dutton. Uh, you know, before we move on to item 9B, I wonder, um, one thing that I failed to report um, when I reconvened from closed session is that there were no reportable actions to report from our closed session. So just for the record. Okay, so moving on to item 9B, uh, I would like to ask my colleagues to join me over uh, on the stage uh, for us to acknowledge African American History Month. Pastor, thank you for coming. Good evening. It's my distinct honor for us to be here tonight um, in this special month of February to ensure that the City of Bellflower recognizes National, National African American History Month. Um, it's, uh, our city is beautiful. It's diverse. Uh, there's uh, contributions that all of us uh, add on and value in our community and I think the contributions of our African American community um, cannot go unnoticed. Um, and it, again, because of that, I am really honored to be here tonight and to and to proclaim this on behalf of the city council and our city. So I know that joining us tonight is Pastor Gartley. And so on behalf of um, so I will be presenting this to you. But before that, I present this to you. Uh, I'd like to read what the proclamation states for the record. So and for everyone to know. So our proclamation tonight states, in appreciation, in appreciation, the city of Bellflower proclaims African American History Month. Whereas in 1976, African American History Month was extended to a month long observance during the month of February. And whereas African American History Month was originally adopted to honor and affirm the importance of the history of African Americans and to focus on the stories and teachings of those who helped build our nation, advance the cause of civil rights, and strengthen families and communities. Whereas communities across the nation organize events to commemorate and carry on this tradition, including our city, and whereas African Americans have made valuable and lasting contributions to our country, our state, and our city, achieving success in all aspects of society, including business, education, politics, science, and the arts. And whereas Bellflower residents are encouraged to celebrate our diverse heritage and culture and continue our efforts to create a world that is more just, peaceful, and prosperous for all. So with that, therefore, I, Juan Garza, Mayor of the City of Bellflower, do hereby proclaim February 2020 as African American History Month. And this proclamation is signed by myself, it's signed by Mayor Pro Tem Dan Coops, Councilmember Ray Dutton, Councilmember Raymond Hamada, and Councilmember Sunny Sane Inez. And so with that, Pastor, I am honored to hand this off to you. I wanna thank uh, each one of you uh, for uh, the honor of uh, sharing this proclamation with us during this time. And uh, we are grateful uh, for the progress and the contributions uh, that we're able to share and make in this city. Thank you so much again. I want to I wanted to also take a moment to introduce uh, my wife and a few of the members of faith uh, to, to stand. Uh. Thank you for being here this evening. All right, so I think with that. 
You're more than welcome to join us. We're going to take a picture right now. That's all right. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you again, everyone. All right, so uh, next up, we have item 9C. Uh, Mr. Stewart. This is a quick update on what the progress we've made on the establishing a temporary service shelter at 8831 Cedar Street. Uh, as Cedar Street. the council knows, Mayor, the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Hold the phone. I'm holding it. Yes. Are there any <laughs> conflicts regarding item 9C? I have property within this district, so a uh, project, so I want to excuse myself. I'm conflicted out. Okay. Forget everything I just said. No, just All right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Groups. I'll be back. As I started to say, uh, as uh, the under the urgency of, of, of powers, the ordinance that the council gave and, and let me uh, uh, authorize me to use in establishing this shelter, uh, periodically I'm obligated to come forward and make an oral presentation to the city council on the progress we made to date. So, what I thought I'd do is start back from the beginning and get everybody in attendance and at the dais uh, a, a brief overview of where we are. Uh, the project started. Uh, which is going to start with the start date of September 23rd, 2019, when the City Council entered into a settlement agreement with the Orange County Catholic Worker through Federal, court, uh, Federal District Court Judge David O. Carter and in the Central District Court of California. On October 1st, 2019, the City executed a lease with uh, the property owner at 8831-8833 Cedar Street to lease a 17,000 square foot warehouse there where the City is establishing its temporary services shelter. On October 14, 2019, the City Council adopted Resolution 1982, the aforementioned emergency and delegated authority to the City Manager to execute documents within, without bidding and without additional City uh, Council authority. To date, I've only utilized this once. I expect to utilize it again next week when I finish my agreement with the construction, which I'll get to, but uh, it's, it's not a power that, that goes lightly, and I, I try not to utilize it unless it's absolutely necessary to keep the project rolling. On November 13th, uh, this uh, public meeting was held on Cedar Street uh, uh, at the temporary service shelter in which we first, and I think unsuccessfully, spoke with the residents in that area about the product for the shelter. Uh, on, on December 2nd, we, in response to the part of the negative reception that we received on November 13th, the city scheduled a tour in Costa Mesa to view a shelter that was very similar to the one that the city is trying to establish on Cedar Street, only two people attended. December 10th, the city met again with the residents at a neutral location about to discuss the service shelter, brought in all the service providers. We thought the meeting went much better. I'm not saying everybody's happy, but I think most people in the area understand now. And I think there's a consensus to move forward, and we are so doing at the address at 8831-8833 Cedar Street. On December 19th, we entered into our agreement with Mercy House, which we believe is the best of the nonprofits operating the shelters in Orange County and L.A. County. That, that agreement is done and it's good. It's not effective yet. It will be effective upon written notice of when we finish the shelter, which I might as well state at the front end. We're anticipating no later than mid-May. We're trying to get it done by the end of April 20, 2020. 
to open the shelter. Uh, December, uh, January 27th, to back up a little bit, the City Council adopted the Urgency Ordinance Number 13-83, which adds the Court Enforced Neutral Tenancy Zone to the Belfar Municipal Code to allow construction of the temporary shelter. It also adopted Resolution Number 2002 to activate the Central Court Enforced Neutral Tenancy Zone, or SENSE. The second reading is February 10th, tonight, 2020. On January 29th, City staff met with Brian Corners, and let me back up a little bit. On uh, November 14th, which I forgot to read into the record here, I'm sorry, November 5th, that I forgot to read in the record, the LA County Board of Supervisors took action on a board motion by Supervisor Janice Hahn to award the city $1.5 million for, uh, to help, uh, assist us in getting started on, on, on building this shelter. <clears throat> on January 29th, as a follow up to that, uh, that board motion, the city met with staff at Brilliant Corners, which is the nonprofit agency set aside to handle the first half million dollars of the grant that was given to us by the county. And we are close to finishing up the funding agreement from them. The additional $1 million will come from a direct funding agreement with the County of Los Angeles, and we're waiting for that contract from County Council as we speak. On February 3rd, the mayor, city manager, and city attorney met with Judge Carter at the federal courthouse in order to give an, and receive an update from the judge on what's happening in Orange and LA County. And we are, we will be the first city, I believe, in LA County to establish a city-run urgency shelter. I, I think even LA hasn't set one up yet, as far as I don't know, but we'll be the first to do that. And uh, the city has received some kudos from Judge Carter, but, and still we're keeping pace with uh, Orange County, which is miles ahead of us in establishing their shelters because they started much earlier. So what's left to do? Well, aside from finding the funding necessary to run it, uh, which is an ongoing task, and we are, <laughs> and we're continuing to work on that, we uh, are established a temporary service shelter community, our committee from the community that surrounds the temporary service shelter. We've received interest from seven community members from that neighborhood, and we expect to start that once the shelter is up and running. We may even have a pre-meeting to talk about some of the expectations of the neighborhood with the with the. Uh, service provider themselves, which is what they're seeking to do. And tenant improvements, or the building out of it. We have rented a warehouse. We're building literally a box within a box, which will include 100 uh, beds for, or, sorry, 50 beds for Bellflower-related uh, uh, homeless people. And that project is just beginning. We're working on the final agreement with Howard CDM. Um, as some of you know, built the uh, steel craft project and working on the exchange project down south on Bellflower Boulevard. Uh, they are also been contracted with the City of Buena Park to build their navigation center out there. So this is a firm that uh, wants to get in this business in a big way. We're excited to do business with them. We think we have a good deal. They are actually working to do the plumbing improvements now, the pre-work necessary for the construction. And uh, we expect to wrap up the agreement this week and start the hardcore construction in the next week or so. Then the only other activity that I've engaged in that I need to report out on is in December I bought uh, $12,000 worth of K-Rail or pre-constructed ra concrete rail to put on the dividing line between the Edison property and the property that the city leased at 8831 Cedar Street, and that was to keep the route for the shuttle properly demarcated with the property that we're sharing there. And other than that, I'm happy to answer, answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you, Mr. Stewart. That's a great report. Um, Mr. Dutton? No questions. <clears throat> All good, ahead. all good. Thank you, Jeff. So it, I'm not sure if I missed it, just one quick question. So. Um, what do we estimate that this thing may be open in the shelter? Uh, we're shooting for, I've committed to the judge the middle of May as to be safe. I think that's the safe date. I'm actually hoping we can get this thing open by the end of April. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Thank you so much for that report, Mr. Stewart. All right, uh, seeing no further questions from my colleagues, we'll move on to item number 10, public comments. Mr. Stewart. This is the time set aside for the public to address the city council on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the City Council should come to the podium, be recognized by the Mayor, and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the City Council on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item. You will be given three minutes to address the City Council. I found him. Great, great, thank you. Is there anybody in the public wishing to make any public comments? Go ahead. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Nice to see you again. Mayor Garza has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> it it's an honor. Council. Welcome. Um, I'm with Central Bay. My, my name is Phil Hawkins. I'm with Central Basin Municipal Water District. I've had several cities ask me to give a brief report 
on Central Basin and some of the things that we've been doing in the district. So tonight I brought by Tammy Hilarity. Uh, she's our uh, PR and our outreach person, and she's going to give you a quick rundown of some of the things that we've been doing in the area, uh, and then if you have any questions, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Good Welcome. evening. I thank you very much. Yes. Um, I have a presentation. If I could share with the city council members, I have a printed copy. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much. Um, so I put together just a few slides, and I'll try to be very brief. Um, <laughs> So Central Basin, we sustain a regional economy and quality of life for 1.6 million people through a multi-decade water supply diversification plan, including infrastructure, maintenance, community education, and progressive policies that promote fiscal and environmental responsibility. So I am here today to educate you and the community members on programs we continue to provide to enhance our water conservation efforts while maintaining our fiscal sustainability plan. So on the first slide, on overview, um, I'll give you a brief overview of Central Basin. Uh, we serve as a wholesale water provider, as I mentioned, to 1.6 million people in the southeast Los Angeles County. We purchase our water from the Metropolitan Water District and distribute it to 40 retail water agencies, and then we provide that to cities and communities in the region. Um, as a Metropolitan Member Agency, Central Basin appoints two representatives to the Metropolitan Board, and Director Philip Hawkins, who uh, just introduced himself, represents Central Basin and everybody else in our service area on the Metropolitan Board of Directors. Um, and so uh, what we do is we provide a wide range of programs and services that I will be um, sharing with you today. And then the next slide is a map of California, where California gets its water from. So about half of Southern California's water supplies are local and the other half are imported. There are two major water suppliers for our region from Northern California and from the Colorado River. Um, we have a unique water system throughout our state and uh, we have, uh, it's full of aqueducts that is channels, pipelines and tunnels that carry water farther um, than anywhere else in the country. And then the following slide that has a little map of um, Los Angeles County, our service area, Southeast Los Angeles County. Um, we are governed by an eight member board of directors, Central Basin is, and we are responsible for providing vision and we drive policy for the district. The board of directors is responsible for approval of the district budget, which drives Central Basin strategic initiatives, such as investments in the recycled water systems. During the past five years, Central Basin has brought more than $17 million to the community that we serve through grant programs, rebate incentive, and conservation programs. The following slide shows a partnership, and there's a list of many programs here that we provide that include um, gardening workshops, we have education programs uh, uh, that are Solar Cup, uh, we call it Solar Cup through the Metropolitan Water District where high school students build solar panels on the cup and then they uh, on the boat and then they race them. We offer inspection trips through many different parts of um, state water pro project and the Colorado River and then Diamond Valley Lake to learn more about that. So we have a wide range of um, programs that we offer to the community. And then the next slide, um, moving on to fiscal sustainability plan. This is an opportunity, what we're doing here is to reach out to our community members. Um, we want to continue working with our stakeholders to identify a revenue source that is equitable to all ratepayers um, and take a hard look at our organization structure and services to ensure that all of our finances are prudently managed and used for the benefit of the community. The next slide, our fiscal sustainability plan. Oh, did we end that? Okay. Do you have any uh, last comments? Um, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity for okay. um, to have us here to talk a little bit more about Central yeah. Basin programs. And please feel free to contact us should you have any questions about anything. Thank you. We appreciate you being here and sharing about what's going on in Central Basin and the okay. overview. So we have your slides here. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hawkins. Thanks for coming this evening. I don't know sure if you were able to sign your name. And thank you. All of our lakes are full, from Shasta Lake all the way down, 100% full. And that's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. We don't like our lakes 100% full, you can't manage it. We like them at 80% full, so we're full, and if we don't find new sources to store this water, we're gonna have to send more water to the ocean. So we do, we're out of the drought, and our lakes are all full, up and down the state. Congratulations, <coughs> thank you for sharing that. That's great, it's, it's reliability, so. 
Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. I'm Josh Murray from Clifton and Brackensick Library, right here in 9945 Flower Street. Um, just wanted to update you that in addition to President's Day, we will be closed on Thursday the 13th uh, for our annual staff training day. And I would like to invite um, the community to a very special story time celebrating the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment on Thursday, March 5th, 2020 from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. In celebration of the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, join us for a special story time followed by an art activity where you'll be designing your very own ballot box. Live refreshments will be provided at this program. A list of ingredients will be available upon request. And this program was generously sponsored by the Friends of the Bellflower Library. Thank you so much for coming and sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening Mrs. Kinnis. Mr. Mayor, City Council members. My name is Anita McInnes. Um, I just have a quick question for Mr. Stewart. With the um, building of this facility, are you going to be, aren't you able to get Measure H funding? Isn't that what it's for? One would think. But, <laughs> no, but in short, not? Not that, the short answer is <laughs> that these cities, I, I think when they design these funds, uh, Measure H funds, they went to the voters and designed the funds. They didn't look at cities as being any kind of a change agent or being able to establish any kind of emergency services um, that wasn't anticipated. So there is a small amount of funds that are available to the cities, but not a great amount. And uh, unfortunately, we don't fit into the classification of somebody that they'd give that funding to. We're working on changing that classification with the state of California because the state, uh, the LA County, in addition to the voter approved funds, which we believe we have entitlement to, a fair amount of it, we also believe we have entitlement to some of the federal funds coming through the state, and it's called HAP funds. And we're working with the state right now to change the category, categories of the HAP funds so that we would be eligible to get those funds. So at the moment, the answer is no, but we're hopeful that we can change that in the next year or so. All the Sacramento. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And we're, there's also other cities that are starting to see it the same way as well. So I, to Mr. Stewart's point, I think we're going to start getting change here soon. Yep. Good evening. Council members. I want to uh, compliment very much. I had a nice conversation with your uh, staff today. Great. And um, I want to explain a couple concerns I have. Um, as you know, in, in the city of Bellflower, you have um, licenses that landlords, um, single family houses, as well as apartments, that they need business licenses. Okay? I provided staff 1,344 properties in the city of Bellflower that are single family houses that, um, that are considered non, non owner occupied. Staff provided me about 400, 400, 425 that they have on records that actually have a business license. So that means we have about 900 properties, single families, that do not have a business license, okay? As you probably know, the fees right now is about $12, okay? Um, according to staff, that has not been changed for over 20 years, okay? Now, at that time, I believe $12 was a very reasonable price, okay? But I think landlords, if their houses haven't gone up 5% or 10%, they wouldn't be very happy for 20, 30 years, especially rents, okay? Rents are very high in, in California, and housing is very high, okay? Um, I sincerely hope that you, city council, will look into this because even though it's $12, you could possibly maybe go into the voters and ask it to increase, increase it. You can also, right now, if a person is behind, you can charge them twice the amount and you can go back three years to charge that landlord that does, did not have their business license on that, okay? Everybody has to play the rules the same. Nobody's above the law, as far as I know, on that. So I hope you guys look into that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for bringing that to, to our attention. And I know you're having conversations with our staff already, so I'm encouraged by that. Again, thank you so much for your vigilance. Thank you. Yeah. And I know Mr. Stewart, I know you're aware as, as well already, so thank you. Yeah. Anybody else from the public wishing to make any public comments this evening? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to item number 11. Um, public hearings, we have none. Item number 12, ordinances and resolutions for consideration, we have none. 
Uh, item number 13, a consideration item, Mrs. Stewart. This is consideration of possible action to uh, just adopt. Just a moment, please. Oh. Get this uh, one I too? have a conflict on this. I have a property within the 500 feet of the 9548 and 9606 Alondra. Probably can click that out of this okay. discussion. Thank you, Mr. Coops. Thank you very much. You bet. This is consideration of possible action to drop resolution number 20-06, a resolution to record a notice of special assessment for nuisance abatement at 9548 Alondra Avenue and 9606 Alondra Boulevard, Alondra Boulevard and Alondra Boulevard. A uh, recommendation of City Council's adopt resolution, resolution number 20-06. We have a presentation by Ms. Karpolis on this Thank issue. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Ms. Karpolis. Good, Good evening, evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. I am presenting item 13A a possible special assessment of 9548 and 9606 Alondra Boulevard. So this property is 12,000 square foot lot. It's located in the city's CG zone. It was developed with three identical structures, which over time became abandoned and dilapidated. And for that reason resulted in a code enforcement case as early as 2015. In 2017, the property was purchased by a new property owner, Mr. Lucio Gomez. It was the hope that Mr. Gomez would rehabilitate the property voluntarily. However, that didn't happen. And the city was forced to engage in enforcement of the property in order to bring it into compliance with the Belfar Municipal Code. In 2018, the city executed an um, administrative abatement warrant for the property and discovered the presence of hazardous chemicals being stored thereon. This resulted in a coordinated cleanup effort between various departments and agencies, notably the City of Bellflower, uh, the Department of Toxic Substances Control, the EPA, and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's and Fire Departments. The abatement of this property took between April 2018 and July of 2019. And the reason it took so long was because the chemicals on the property needed to be identified, they needed to be properly disposed of, the air quality had to be tested, the soil, there were soil permeation issues that needed to be addressed, and the structures had to be fully demolished from the property so that they didn't create any type of an attractive nuisance. This resulted in the city attorney's office obtaining about five uh, administrative warrants and extending the original warrant five times in order to make sure that the there was sufficient time to clear the property completely. So these are a before and after photograph of the property taken from the street opposing. The total cost of the abatement is $87,015.59. It was a tremendous effort with from city staff is in conjunction with the county departments and the state departments in order to clear this property. The city can recover its costs as either a special assessment or a lien on the property pursuant to the Bellflower Municipal Code. Staff at this time is recommending that the council consider recovering its abatement costs through a special assessment. The property owner has been sufficiently notified and provided with opportunities to pay the abatement costs or to object to them. To date, he has done neither. And so at this time, staff is recommending that the city council adopt the resolution approving the assessment on the property. And I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Thank you for that report. Any questions, Mr. Dutton? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Hamada? Um, again, maybe no questions, but just a comment. Again, I'm glad to see this is almost over. <laughs> yeah. And that, uh, again, uh, hopefully the city is made whole again. Uh, but uh, again, great work. I, I know this was quite an ordeal. And uh, I remember the boy, the news and everything, the reports and, and everybody calling about, you know, within that area. And, and so uh, glad it's almost uh, to the finish line. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, I do have a question. Yes, sir. Yeah, I knew I had one. I just no, didn't know how to order it. On the assessment, is it a, an assessment as a lump sum put on the, on, as a, uh, on the tax rolls? That is correct. And doable and payable on that tax year, or is it going to be broken up? No, it's that tax year. That tax year. And if not, then the property will the property be The property goes in the tax default after that. Okay. 
My question is answered. Perfect. Great. Okay. Great question. I, I want to echo the comments up here. I I think the considering the the large effort, right, and the um, the potential for this thing to have gone uh, way worse than it did. I think the containment that was done, uh, the efforts from staff, and the coordination between all the different agencies at the local, state, and, re and federal level that addressed this issue and were able to contain it. I just um, it goes without saying that everyone did a fantastic job. So thank you, thanks for your efforts as well. Uh, we're almost there. So with that, uh, I will open it up for any public comments regarding this item. All right, so seeing none, then I will bring it back to behind us. Mayor. So, nope. Yes, sir. If there's no further comments, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, adopt resolution number 20-06, a resolution to record a notice of special assessment for the nuisance and abatement of property at 9548 Alondra Boulevard along with 9606 Alondra Boulevard. Okay, so I have I'll a motion. And I'll be very happy to second that. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. And with that, uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Dutton? Aye. Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Mayor Garza? Aye. Okay. Without objection, that'll be the order. Thank you so much, Ms. Karpolis. All right, so I will move on to item number 14. Can we uh, have Mr. Coops come back in oh. before I start that? Welcome back, Mr. Coops. Thank you. Uh, item number 14, consent calendar. Any items to be pulled? Any conflicts, recusals? Mr. Mayor, I will uh, be abstaining from 14F. I have a property conflict at 8724 Cedar and also uh, 14G, same situation, property conflict. So I'll okay. be abstaining from 14F and 14G. Okay. So I have. Uh, Recuses 14F, 14G for uh, Mayor Pro Tem Coops. Any others from my colleagues? No. All right, seeing none. Um, uh, any motion? motion to uh, move this consent calendar. Okay. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any uh, abstentions? Any opposed? Seeing none. Okay, that'll nope. be the order. Without objection, that'll be the order. So let's move on to item number 15 council reports. Let's start off with uh, Mr. Denton. I'm good, Mayor. Nothing to talk about. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Coops. I'm the same way. I have oh. no, nothing to announce. Okay, great. Mr. Hamada? Are we trying to set a meeting record here? <laughs> no, I'll just, I'm going to ruin just, it. So. No, you'll <laughs> fix that for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a couple things. Uh, I, again, on January 30th, I, I um, uh, went with staff to the ICS to uh, look at IDEA Exchange. And... Uh, want to again thank uh, Jim and his staff for uh, doing a great job there and made some great connections followed up on some things uh, again I had the opportunity to to meet and uh, greet uh, some of the businesses that are uh, again planning again planning to do things in town so uh, I got the opportunity to reconfirm those and uh, uh, it's always good that uh, at least we have these opportunities again we were one of the few cities there and uh, uh, so and it, there's some uh, great opportunities out there still and uh, uh, we're still talking it up, and uh, again, uh, um, I think I'll leave it to the mayor for Aldi and and Bravo. And but uh, I did have an opportunity to uh, um, on the first of February. I did have uh, to uh, uh, check out uh, the Bellflower Looking Better event in the north part of town, and uh, so I had a great opportunity to to meet residents and uh, again talk up the town. They they are loving what's happening in Bellflower, and uh, uh, they did have a chance to uh, catch a council person's ear to, to, to report some things. So those have been passed on to staff, so uh, things to uh, uh, take care of. And uh, so uh, it's a great opportunity to, again, get out in the community, uh, see how things are going, and, uh, uh, and as uh, the past mayor, the best is yet to come. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do you mind touching on all the action I wasn't there? So. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. okay. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, on the first again, uh, uh, we opened Aldi. So, oh, no clapping. <laughs> 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 all right. No, a great, a, a, a great shopping opportunity. A clean store, well lighted. Uh, again, a lot of products. 
I think there are great deals for, uh, for the community and uh, it was uh, quite well attended. The lines kept on, uh, you know, weaving and uh, just coming in. So uh, uh, just uh, again, welcome all the, to this community. And um, well, you were there for Bravo. So I'll leave that for Bravo for you. I was there for Bravo. And so on all the, it's, it, it's really great. One of the things that we kept hearing from the community is that they wanted a grocery store. They wanted a grocery store. And so we're happy. We're proud of the fact that not only do we have a grocery store, but it's in the heart of our town as well. So it's accessible. So uh, welcome, Aldi. Uh, for myself, I uh, have a couple things to report. So I hope I don't ruin our, <laughs> our record pace here. But uh, SB 50, I know that I've been up here a lot talking about uh, the state bill that really was a very bad bill. And um, sometimes we, I think we as cities, as city councils, we, we normally react to things after the fact. We're not happy and they become laws. And this is one of those rare examples where we got ahead of it and we were through partnerships and through advocating for cities, we were able to kill this bill. And so I'm really proud of the fact that not only did our council step up and fight it, our city staff did as well and other cities throughout the state did as well. So um, the LA division that we have in league, uh, especially um, took big leadership on this. So uh, that's a really good success story uh, for our region, but especially at least for me, for, for Bellflower. So I'm happy to, to, um, to report on that. Mr. Uh, Stewart mentioned before as part of his verbal report on homelessness that uh, himself and our city attorney and myself participated in a in homelessness panel. We presented to a whole bunch of cities throughout our region in a conference in Santa Barbara. It was exactly during the Aldi grand opening, yeah. so that was the reason why I wasn't able to be at the Aldi grand opening. But uh, what I was really happy about is, is this is the first time that we do this. And so on this panel, we had the, the uh, administrative perspective from Mr. Stewart's viewpoint, the Vantage, and then uh, Mr. Ber Ber uh, Berger's perspective on the legal aspect of what we're doing in Bellflower with regards to homelessness, but also the policy perspective, which is what I brought to the panel. And what was wonderful is that we didn't really see people leaving the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you've ever been to conferences, you see a lot of that fluid nature and, and, and people were, they stayed. And so I think hopefully that's a reflection of us being good storytellers here. Mm -hmm. We had a good thing to share, mm -hmm. but I, th I think if anything, <laughs> If anything, I think it's just, uh, it's wonderful to have Bellflower be um, in that position where we are actually leading something like this. So it's, it's a, I'm very proud of our community. I'm very proud of our city. I'm very proud of our community for supporting our efforts. And I think that once we get this thing up and going, um, I think people will, will see that we're on the right track on this thing. If trying to have that win-win that of helping those that want to be helped. And at the same time, those that uh, don't want to be helped then we'll address them in other fashions as well. Uh, when on this topic, I also presented, I was invited by the Rosso Street uh, Neighborhood Watch um, group. And so I presented to them as well on the 4th of February. Really good showing, really uh, attentive audience. I, I think in the beginning, they weren't sure what I was going to be presenting on in terms of our model. And I think at the end of the meeting, um, I actually had some residents that came up to me and said, you know, I was prepared to come here and tell you I wasn't happy with the fact that the city is actually considering locating a homeless shelter in our city. But after hearing the presentation and hearing the logic, we're in support. And so, again, it's very encouraging. And that's our job, right, is to ensure that our community is informed, that they're aware. And I think once that happens in this communication, uh, we cannot, it, it, all we can have is success. Right, we could, with good communication. So that was a really good meeting. Um, that same morning on the 4th, I believe Mr. Stewart reporting on how we met with Judge Carter, uh, who's overseeing the settlement agreement that we signed up for uh, on our homeless efforts. On the 6th of February, we had our Bravo Awards here in our auditorium. And for those of you that did not see it, I think we're gonna be putting that um, online uh, on, on YouTube in the near future, so you can see it if you <coughs> missed it. It was a really nice ceremony, um, a lot to be proud of in terms of our law enforcement that does so much for our community. I will never tire of saying this in case if you haven't heard it, but our city has experienced, uh, last year experienced the lowest crime rate that we've had in 45 years. 45 years, so. <laughs> and again, that's, that's in, in large part to our law enforcement team but it's also in large part to our community. 
Um, it doesn't happen without community. You can have all the law enforcement in the world, but at the end of the day, they can't be everywhere. So it really does take community to step up and to join in this fight, to look out for your neighborhoods, to look out for each other, because at the end of the day, nobody will take care of your neighborhood like you will, right? Not even me, it's you. And so this is really is a reflection of community stepping up. Um, so I'm really proud of, of Bellflower, really proud of our community. Um, and because of that, what I was really um, fond of, of this Bravo Award ceremony, not just because of the fact that I was mayor during it, <laughs> but really it's the fact that we had, it's a good problem to have. We didn't have as many life-saving, law enforcement type of stories in this edition of Bravo because of the good crime rate or the, you know, the, the crime rate that we had. So we had a lot of more community type of stories that we awarded in this edition and I'll be honest, I, I would rather do this version any day than the other version. So again, uh, kudos to everyone. Um, and please look out for your neighborhood. Look out for our community. We have a really special city in Bellflower. Um, our speaker, Danny Trejo, was really good, really engaging. He had great stories. And Alicia Del Valle, third year coming here, being our MC, um, she did a fantastic job as well. And then last but not least, on the 7th of, of February, I was invited by Spectrum to participate in this uh, this effort. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Know You're Elected. And so they do an interview with electeds. And so I was invited to go to LA City Hall. And they had this camera crew. They brought in from New York. And they put makeup on me. I've never had that before <laughs> in my life. But And so they asked me these questions. I guess it's going to come out in the next two, three weeks. Um, but what I found really, again, I think it's a reflection of the leadership of our city is that I found out after the fact that the people that were invited to participate in this were really big people, <laughs> right? So the fact that Bellflower was able to be a part of an effort like this, where you had, you know, all the county supervisors were invited, the mayor of LA was, um, and Bellflower, right? So we have a lot to be proud of, and I had the biggest amount of pride in representing our community in an effort like this. So, so those, those of you that have Spectrum, please uh, don't judge me when you see this interview. <laughs> But um, I think we have a really good story to share. So hopefully you'll see it when it comes out. And so with that, uh, that completes item number 15. And so it is 748 and we are adjourned to the next regular meeting of the Bellflower City Council, which will take on place on Monday, February 24, 2020 at 530 p.m. This meeting is adjourned. No, no. Well, the record said 28. <laughs> no, you did good. You did good. Uh, Scott Larson, 28 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That was 18. 18 minutes? I thought it was 18 minutes. Uh, 18 or 19 I stand corrected, 18. 18 or 19 minutes, yeah. Well, it has to do with public comments. That's what's going to